We are at Virtual Tour Stop 1, the Hoskins Farm. Now this is a crucial piece of the battlefield because this is essentially where the British are going to start the battle. They're going to deploy in line across the Hoskins Farm and attack heading east against where the American army is in three lines. Now, the whole reason this farm is here is because Joseph and Hannah Hoskins moved here in 1778, three years before the battle. The reason they came down here was they were actually trying to get away from the war. In 1777, while they're still living up in Pennsylvania, both the American and British armies came too close for comfort during the Philadelphia campaign. So Joseph and Hannah moved down here, both trying to get away from the war as well as trying to take advantage of cheap land prices down here in North Carolina. If we were here in 1781 at the time of the battle, what we would have seen is a 150 acre plantation and it would have been a very sparsely populated area. Pretty much the western two thirds of North Carolina would have been sparsely populated and North Carolina itself was one of the poorer colonies at the time. So now that brings up the question, what in the world are two major armies doing here and why are they about to fight the largest battle of the southern campaign here of all places? Well, it's not the farm itself because the farm isn't of any military value and even the courthouse that gives the battlefield its name doesn't have a military value. The reason they are fighting here is more about the fact that what they're trying to do is land knockout blows against each other at this battle. And the way they're doing that is via the New Garden Road. The New Garden Road is just to the north of us and at the time of the battle it would have been a highway in the 18th century, a great wagon road essentially meaning that it was wide enough for wagons to pass each other in opposite directions without someone needing to pull off to the side. The New Garden Road, also known as the Salisbury Wagon Road, is so important because that is the route that is going to allow Cornwallis to finally attack Nathaniel Greene's American army. See, he's actually been trying to do that for two months now. After the Battle of Cowpens, Cornwallis immediately launched after the American army, initially hoping to free the prisoners he had lost at the Battle of Cowpens, or at the very least, maybe catch one half of Greene's army and destroy it before they could reunite. He doesn't achieve those things, and what he does is he spends two months chasing Greene all around North Carolina, unsuccessfully trying to get him to turn and fight him. What's going to change here, and what's going to cause the American army to finally turn around and fight, is that they had got a huge influx of reinforcements the week leading up to this battle. This has essentially doubled his army in size, so now he has the confidence to turn and fight. Now, they had actually stopped here back in February when they were initially being pursued by the British, and Green considered fighting back then. But when he had a council of war with his subordinates, they convinced him to not do it. Basically, the idea back then was the armies were too equal in size and the men were tired. They had just taken some rapid marches to reunite the two halves of Green's army, so his subordinates didn't feel that they were quite ready to turn and fight just yet. But now, the tables have turned. He is now double the size of Cornwallis' army, and he's had a few days to drill the militia. In the few days directly preceding this battle, they drill the army to try and get everybody as proficient as possible before Green is willing to finally commit it against the British. And where are the British at this point? They are 12 miles southwest of where we are right now, at Deep River Meeting House. At this point, Cornwallis' army is ragged, run down, and it's running out of food. He had to separate from his supply lines at the beginning of the battle to try and speed up to try and catch the American army, but he failed to catch them that entire time, and all the while, he's literally worn down his men. While they are running around North Carolina, they are running around one of the poorest colonies at the worst time to possibly campaign. It is late winter. Nothing's quite growing yet. Everything that was preserved for winter has probably already been eaten. And then the other problem is that if you are chasing an American army, that American army is getting to everything before you and picking up whatever there is left to eat. So, at this point, Cornwallis is desperate for a result. He either can stop pursuing go back to one of his nearest supply points, or he can take one last stab at the American army to finally land that crucial knockout blow he's been desperate to get. If he can finally knock out Greene's army, then he can pacify North Carolina. Greene's army arrives here the day before on March 14th, and Greene's still a little on the fence about what he wants to do. Part of him wants to use his superior numbers to go and attack the British, but in the back of his mind, he's still considering a plan that Daniel Morgan used. Daniel Morgan at Valve Cowpens used subsequent defensive lines called a defense in depth, truly wearing down your enemy until you hit him with your main line. Green's thinking about doing that here. And so what he's trying to decide is when should he strike or if he should strike at all. To keep tabs on what the British are up to, General Green is going to send Light Horse Harry Lee with his legion, that's cavalry and light infantry, supported by some Virginia riflemen, out ahead of the army to figure out where the British are, what they're doing, where they're going. As they go out, they go about three to four miles out ahead of the army, and then Lee sends additional vedettes out further to actually observe the British camp. 
On the morning of March 15th at about 2 a.m., they're gonna report hearing noises in camp that the British are getting ready to do something. By 5.30 a.m., they can confirm the British are up on the road going somewhere. When word of the British movement finally gets back to General Green, Green is gonna order Light Horse Harry Lee to take his legion and recon in force. He wants them to confirm, is it the entire British army on the road and are they headed here? Four miles from here at New Garden, they're gonna run into the advance guard of the British army led by Bannister Tarleton. And these two forces have similar makeups. Both have cavalry, both have light infantry, and both are supported by riflemen. There are going to be three short, sharp clashes at the New Garden Meeting House. The first one is going to be essentially Light Horse Harry Lee baits Tarleton's cavalry down a narrow path, then turns and counterattacks them, driving them back. Then Lee is going to pursue until he runs into the light infantry and riflemen of the British forces, and he is repulsed. And the final short little clash that's going to happen in the morning is going to be the infantry of both sides firing at each other. But eventually the Americans are going to pull back because, again, they're not trying to start the battle there. Lee was just going out trying to confirm that the British Army is on the road and that it is headed here. He has all the information he needs to confirm that, and so he's coming back to uh, uh, tell General Green that the British are on the way. News that the British are indeed on the road headed here pretty much ends any idea of Green maybe considering attacking the British. He doesn't want to try and maneuver the militia with a British Army on the road. So what he's going to do is he's going to start deploying into his three lines for his defense in depth. So with that being said, it is now noon on March 15th, 1781. The British have arrived at the battlefield and they are beginning to deploy. And they're deploying under fire. Because when they appeared just on the other side of these buildings, 400 yards away at the American first line, two six pound cannons saw them and started firing solid shot down the road at them. The British are picking up their own guns in the New Garden Road, start firing back and forth. And really the way the battle of Bristol Courthouse begins is with an artillery duel while the British begin deploying. And our next stop, we're going to talk more in depth about how both of these armies are actually deployed on this battlefield on March 15th, 1781.